Welcome to YouTube Excel Finance Trick number 14. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link and download the workbook Excel Finance Tricks 1 to 17. Hey, in number 14 here, we're going to start on the PV, NPV, and XNPV sheet tab. <clears throat> now, in our last uh, video, we looked at the present value function. We were considering whether to buy a piece of equipment that was going to generate $35,000 at the end of each period. <clears throat> Our internal rate of return, required rate of return was 15%. And the piece of equipment we're thinking about buying cost $165,500. Now, I'm going to click in this cell right here and hit F2. That puts it into edit mode. We use the present value function. Now, the reason we're allowed to do that is because this met the definition of an annuity. $35,000, same amount each period, the same amount of time between each period. Now, there's an alternative, the net present value. Now, the net present value is a function you can use when you have different amounts for cash flows. I'm actually going to click on this cell right here. I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to put my net present value function here. And I down below, we have some cash flows. Bloop, there they are, all the same. And there's the periods. Now, really, if it's an annuity, use the present value. But I want to show you that the net present value works. And then, then I'll show you what it's really for. Equals net present value, open parentheses. Now, the rate, we have our 15% here. And then comma, it wants a bunch of values. Well, you can just highlight those. And there's something interesting about the net present value. You cannot include the cash flow at time 0. It's taking future cash flows. The way this function interprets it, whatever is the first number is one year out or one period out. So if we included our cost here, it would not work. Now I'm going to close parentheses. And then this net present value, we'll figure out the net present value of just those cash flows. Control Enter. There it is, 175,000. Now we want to F2. And to it, we want to add our negative cost. And this will give us our actual net present value. That's how you include the, the initial cost or cash flow at time 0 is by adding it to the net present value. And there we have it. Now, the advantage to this is the net present value is if the cash flows are not equal, then you can just simply uh, change them. Let's say that our cash flow in the early years was 40,000 and 40,000 and 40,000. Well, that's 400,000. <clears> I'm just a bad typer. I can't type anywhere. So there it is. Then this will work. This net present value function will work on uh, cash flows that are not the same. You still need to have the same time period between each one. So that is the net present value compared to the present value function and how to use them to make a buying something decision, discounting the cash flows back to today so we can compare our net present values and present values to the actual cash cost. All right, we'll see you next finance trick.